you like me right now? This moment is so much bigger than me. And everybody back in Boston watching us tonight. And thank you so much, the city of Boston. I'm so happy. Thank you. Hi, and welcome to our fifth annual Oscar show. This is Oscar Buzz, and I'm Mike Wigdor, and I do the show along with my friend and co-host, Frank Mendoza. How you doing, Frank? How are you? Good Yourself? to see you. Yeah, same here. So, folks, uh, this Oscar show is not like the others. Uh, the biggest difference with this Oscar show this year is all the controversy surrounding the Oscar show. The movies themselves, they're great movies. They deserve to be rewarded. The actors do deserve to be rewarded. But the, the way this show is being treated by the producers of the Oscars is terrible because the biggest thing right now that's happening is that um, major directors, major actors, A-listers are complaining that the Oscar show does not want to have the cinema, cinematography award, the editing award, um, what's it, the hair and makeup award, and live short as part of the live telecast. And I think that's a terrible thing. I'm sure Frank thinks that's a terrible thing. Um, right? <laughs> <I> mean, <laughs> well, let's just cut right that, to the yeah, chase. No, let's I just mean, go right there. Let's go back to the beginning last summer, summer of 2018, when it was announced that they were trying to boost the ever-sagging ratings of the annual Oscar telecast. And what they ended up doing was making an absurd announcement that they were introducing a new category for the Academy Award for Most Popular Film. And that was an idea That's that right. probably lasted all of eight seconds because there were people both in and out of Hollywood especially on Twitter, who found the idea completely misguided, said that it would do nothing to attract new viewership, and it was an idea that the Academy decided to temporarily put on hold. They said, we are not actually going to move forward with it after all, we'll put the idea on hold, mm -hmm. and that's pretty much the last that we ever heard of that idea. And now here we are post-nominations and there just seems to be one problem after another after another and the whole thing really is geared towards trying to attract more viewership That's because right. the ratings have just been steadily on the decline. Mm -hmm. Last year's hit an all-time low yeah. and with the amount of talent you had on the screen it's kind of a shocker for a lot of people. You had Jimmy Kimmel True. hosting, you had Newcomers who are huge, like Timothee Chalamet, you of course had returning favorites like, like Meryl Streep and Octavia Spencer. And Francis McDormand. Francis McDormand. Yeah. And you had these movies, Get Out, that were right. huge hits. But then it just, the ratings just tanked. So what the Academy was seeking to do was to try to appeal to a new generation of audiences really to try to make the Oscars relevant again yep. and they tried to introduce the popular film category that was a bust then they tried to introduce this idea of well they actually had a problem with the host too uh, they had the problem they with, had the, with the host Hart the whole Kevin Hart controversy yeah. that certainly did not help nope but as they say in show business there's no such thing as bad publicity yes I suppose but uh, yeah. <laughs> so that was that was uh, that dominated the headlines throughout the holiday season, mm -hmm. the Os the Oscar host problem. So now they're going on without a host, which is fine. Uh, I think that many of us would probably feel a little bit more comfortable with that idea if yeah. the <laughs> if the history of going hostless uh, were a bit more solid. The last time the Oscars were without a host was thirty years ago. Early 1989, the infamous Snow White 
duetting with Rob Lowe number. Just go into YouTube, type Oscars, Snow White, Rob Lowe. It's a 12 minute long opening where this aspiring actress oh. was dressed as Snow oh, yeah, White. I remember reading about that. And she was dancing around, yeah. doing the falsetto voice and trying to intermingle with the nominees mm -hmm. in the audience who are trying their best to not be acknowledged. And then she and Rob Lowe burst into song and it was just, it was Terrible. painful. <laughs> it was yes. painful. She actually, the following morning, had to sign mm -hmm. a gag order promising not to talk about it with the press. Uh, she was only able to finally speak up publicly for the first time about five years ago. But that was back in the late 1980s. They're going without a host again. Let's hope that they learn from history and actually have entertainment that people will want to see because yeah. I don't think that uh, they're going to win any new Oscar fans if they're going to keep going in these misguided directions. But getting back to what you were talking about, the most recent, mm. I don't know if scandal is too melodramatic of a word, but it's Hollywood, so we'll get melodramatic. <laughs> This latest scandal is that the Academy made the announcement that live action short cinematography, makeup and hairstyling and editing would be categories that would be awarded during the commercial breaks, right. and then they would televise later on in the ceremony, and on the tel on, in the telecast, that they would televise the acceptance speeches. And, uh, but the, the idea is, is that it will be a rotating grouping of categories. Next year it will be four different, what yeah. they call minor categories, uh, that will be relegated to the commercial breaks. And then the following year it'll be four different beyond that. So the idea is it'll be sort of a rotating The whole idea basically basis. is to try to get it down to three hours each time. Right? <laughs> Which is not going to happen no, no matter what they try happen. to do. It never... It never no. works. So, folks, if you're Oscar fans like we are, just That's right. brace yourselves for the long haul. It'll be a late night because when is it yeah. not? That's right. Enjoy That's it. That's part they, of the charm. Yeah, the acceptance speeches are part of the whole deal. People have one opportunity to thank everybody, and you know, it may not be it may be the only time that they're ever going to be, you know, rewarded. So, let's start with the first mm -hmm. uh, be, um, nominated best picture, and that is Black Panther. I have seen gods fly. I've seen men build weapons that I couldn't even imagine. Uh-huh. I've seen aliens drop from the sky. Yeah. But I have never seen anything like this. How much more are you hiding? Hold up. Let's go, go, go. My son, it is your time. Show me my respect and bow down. You get to decide what kind of king you are going to be. Don't freeze. I never freeze. The revolution will not be televised. Show me my respect. And bow down. We own ya. We own ya. We only get started now. Cause we own ya. Everybody think they know me now. Cause we own ya. You and I'm my homie now. Cause we own ya. Uh, I waited my entire life for this. Uh, the world's gonna start over. I'ma burn it all. What happens now determines what happens to the rest of the world. You will not be able to stay home, brother. You will not be able to plug in, turn on, and cop out. The revolution will not be televised. Let's have some fun. The revolution. Oh boy, I saw this movie in the summer. This is one of the first best pictures I think I've seen. And I guess the, the summertime is the best time to see these great Marvel, um, what do you call it? Oh, yeah. They call them tentpole movies, they back in the day they used movies, to call them, right? Blockbusters, blockbusters popcorn, popcorn movies. Popcorn movies, yes. Yeah. 
has your combination of everything, you know, action, um, um, love sequence, um, you know, fight rivalries. Um, and almost in some ways, I thought about this later, the, the, the rivalry between the two brothers in there that were fighting to become mm -hmm. king of Wakanda reminded me almost of the Lion King in some ways. Yeah, that's actually a very good point. I yeah, never thought of that. I just thought of it today coming in there because it's like, uh, who's going to be the next king? And uh, it, it is very cleverly done. It's a sophisticated, it's a movie where the black, you know, this black um, country, in, a country in Africa is the one that's probably the most technologically advanced, but yet they're hiding it from the rest of the world. And, um, you know, but then, you know, the, the rogue brother wants to bring it out to, to the world. And uh, so it's about their, how they're kind of fighting with each other to, to, to do that or just to resist it. Um, and, I, you know, and Black Panther is like another superstar. Another, mm. you know, good acting, I thought. Very good acting. I'm surprised they didn't get nominated because, you know, if you nominate a, pic a movie for best picture, you would think one, at least one of the actors would get nominated. And, and Michael mm -hmm. B. Jordan and was it Chadwick Boseman? Chadwick Boseman, Lupita Nyong'o. Yeah, there were some really good actors in there. Mm -hmm. you know, that kind of like surprises me in a way. That's the only thing it got nominated. Well, no, it got five. five, five. Oh, it's nominated in a lot of the technical, a, categories, yeah, technical, technical visual categories, visual effects, right. sound, that kind of thing. Yeah. But if it does win Best Picture, which you never know until the envelope is opened. It might benefit from a split vote from some of the other front runners, it's between true. some of the other front runners. But if it wins Best Picture, it'll only be the 11th Best Picture winner to have zero acting nominations. Um, oh, really? Say, I wouldn't be able to list all of them now, but no, Braveheart was a Best Picture winner, no acting nominations. No Gibson did get nominated for Not that? for acting. Wow. Uh, Slumdog Millionaire uh, from 2008, no oh. acting nominations, but oh, it got Best I Picture. That, yeah. So. If it wow. wins, it'll be the it'll be the um, no director. Did he did he get nominated for director either? Right. Mel Gibson for Braveheart actually no. one director. No, no, no. But I mean for this movie, uh, Coog, Ryan Coogler. Oh, Ryan. No, he did not. There is no. There is not a best director. Mostly nomination technical. For this film mostly technical. Best picture. Visual effects. Visual effects. That kind mm -hmm. of thing. Um, this is actually one of those rarer. I won't say rare, but more rare instances where a movie released so early in the year. I mean, this movie came out a year ago. Usually, yeah. the or as a general rule of thumb, Best Picture nominees are released later on, fall, right before the holiday season, right. that kind of thing. But this came out in February of 2018, so that was, you know, it, I mean, it's happened before, but not that often. So the fact that the movie is a year old and it's currently streaming on Netflix, it's been available. Yes, it's been DVD. really on home video now yeah. since last summer, so, you know, it's an impressive accomplishment. Yeah. It was a good so. movie. I, I, the, then the next movie would be Black Klansman. Um, it's a movie involving, uh, well, you'd have to see it, racial, racial issues. So let's see a clip from Black Klansman. <laughs> There's never been a black cop in this city. We think you might be the man to open things up around here. Hello, this is Ron Stallworth calling. Well, who am I speaking with? This is David Duke. Grand Wizard of the Ku Klux Klan. That David Duke? God. Last time I checked. What can I do you for? Well, since you asked, I hate blacks. I hate Jews, Mexicans, and Irish, Italians, and Chinese. But my mouth to God's ears, I really hate those black rats. And anyone else, really, that doesn't have pure white Aryan blood running through their veins. I'm happy to be talking to a true white American. God bless white America. The KKK is planning an attack. How do you propose to make this investigation? We'll establish contact over the phone. We'll need a white officer to play me when they meet face to face. You for the white race, Ron? Oh, hell yeah. So there becomes a combined Ron, Ron Stallworth. Can you do that? With the right white man, we can do anything. When's the last time they let a rookie lead an investigation? Oh, that's right. 
Never. <laughs> okay. Become his friend. Let's get invited back. So what kind of stuff are you guys do? Cross burdens, marches. This is fixing to be a big year for us. You ask too many questions. You undercover or something? We must unite and organize to fight racism. Are you down for the liberation of black people? Power to the people. All power to all the people. All power to all the people. It's right, sister. For you, it's a crusade. For me, it's a job. You're Jewish. That hatred, doesn't that piss you off? You're taking this Jew lie detector test. Why are you acting like you ain't got skin in the game? I'm telling you, the wars are coming. Black power! Black power! Knights of the Ku Klux Klan. That's us. Stallworth brothers. We're on a roll, baby. America first. America first. If I would have known this was a clan meeting, I wouldn't have taken this mother. This is not an easy movie to watch for obvious reasons, and it's certainly not an easy movie to talk about, but it is a very Spike Lee movie. It's very blunt. It is very in your face. There is, it's very sarcastic. It pulls no punches. There is absolutely no filter. For some people, for certain tastes, that kind of candid realism is very refreshing. For other people, it's a complete and total turnoff. So it's really a matter of personal taste, personal judgment. But I will say that Spike Lee, this is his, at long last, his very first Best Director Oscar nomination, yes. which was a long time coming. Well overdue. L long overdue. Yeah. Like his style, hate his style. It is a very distinctive style, and really, that's what art is, having your own style, having your own voice that is unmistakably yours. I mean, this yes. guy is an auteur. He does have an Academy Award that is an honorary Oscar, yeah. but this is the first time that he has been nominated in a competitive category yeah. for directing. He was nominated for screenplay. Mm -hmm. for Do the Right Thing back in 1989. He was nominated for was. this for screenplay, that should, too. That, that movie should have been nominated for Best Picture back then. Do the Right Thing? Yeah. Yes. That, that was, was a great movie. That was the year of Driving Miss Daisy yeah. and Born on the Fourth of July. Yeah. He just uh, didn't get a... He didn't get the Best get Director it. nomination that year. But he has yeah. it this year. And even though John David Washington didn't get a nomination, um, Adam Driver. Adam Driver does have a supporting actor nomination. So right. it's interesting that you have Kylo Ren himself. <laughs> you know, you <laughs> see true. him in, you know, the TV series Girls. You see him in the new Star Wars trilogy. And then he takes on a role like this. I mean, that's, that shows taking artistic risks and all the power to him. So we'll see how that works out for him on Oscar night with his supporting actor yeah. nomination. I saw that he, Spike Lee, wanted to do this because it was based on the true story, though. Of, uh, loosely based. Uh, loosely based, <laughs> on maybe, on story. Ron's story. Yeah. Ron Washington. Uh, I mean, uh, yeah, who, who was actually, did go undercover mm. he, and did expose the mm. Klan in, in uh, yeah. Colorado Springs. Yeah, he put his own, I don't know, slant on it, whatever, but, mm -hmm. you know, um, he brings up issues that, you know, are social issues, and, and they're not going away. And I think, you know, um, he did a, f it's, it's ironic because he's very strong in his opinions, but uh, he tried to, he tried to, you know, I wouldn't say it was even-handed in a way, but he was portraying both sides. Both sides mm. had, had, uh, had, had was, was, to the extreme. So I would say that it's a great movie to see and I would recommend seeing it. I'd recommend seeing it as long as you are prepared for it. This is not a movie to fold laundry by, let's put it that way. No, in fact, so. yeah, you know, I was, I was talking to Roxanne, it's like you're, you're like sitting on the edge of your seat because you don't, you're wondering for the, you're waiting for the next shoe to drop. It's very, very suspenseful. And any time there is a blunt line of dialogue or a horrific image, you say to yourself, Am I okay to be watching this? You're questioning yourself, but that's what good well, I think art it's is supposed to do. It's supposed yeah. to make you ask these questions. That's right, and so. think. When you're, when, you're, when you're finished watching the movie, you walk out thinking about what happened. That's how a good movie is. Well, speaking of good movies, what we have up next is one of my personal favorites of the bunch. This is Bohemian Rhapsody, the yes. story of Freddie Mercury of Queen. Totally agree. <laughs> Fantasy. Going a landslide. 
escape from reality. I enjoyed the show. I also I write songs. Our lead singer just quit. Then you'll need someone new. I love the way you move on stage. The whole room belongs to you. Don't you see what you could be? No one will play us on the radio. We need to get experimental. Thunderbolts and lightning, very, very frightening. Do it again. One more. How many more Galileos do you want? Roger, there's only room in this band for one hysterical queen. Mark these words. No one will play a queen. Fortune favours the bold. Freddie, concerning your private life. What more do you need to know? I make music. I want to give the audience a song that they can perform. What's the lyric? Sing it. Ready, Freddy? Let's do it. You need to slow down, Fred. I just need a bit of time. Because if I don't have time... We're all legends. This movie was a tour de force. I, I love this movie. Uh, Rami Malek just embodied Freddie Mercury. And I'm a big Queen uh, fan. Like, I mean, a lot of people out there, middle middle age, whatever, even younger people love Queen. How could you not with some of the great songs, you know? Uh, we Are the Champions, Bohemian Rhapsody itself, um, We Will Rock You. But he does, it's such a great story because it shows how there's dra plenty of drama in it, not just music. It shows his evolution from becoming, I forget who he was originally, his name, but how he, how he became Freddie Mercury. Um, and it became this persona, but he had so many demons that he was dealing with along the way. And, you know, it shows how Queen itself evolved as a band. Um, it's, it's just, it's a great drama story. And it gives you insights into Freddie Mercury that you, don't, you wouldn't know if you uh, are not familiar with him, except as, you know, the lead singer for Queen. Um, it's, it's, a, it's a very involved story, I would say. It has its ups and downs, and it's uh, dramatic. Um, it has a great beginning and ending, because it starts with the Live Aid and ends with the Live Aid. Uh, so it's got bookend endings to that. Uh, I think some people didn't like the movie that much because of uh, the director, Brian Singer, didn't last very... He lasted almost through the end of the movie. He didn't quite make it because there's... Um, you know, he's accused of, uh, I guess... What, misconduct. Misconduct, without getting into detail about it, yes. So, uh, but, but there's no denying that he did a great job on this uh, as a movie, and, and it was finished by the producer of the movie, who's Graham King. So, uh, yeah, I would say loved it, and this is my favorite, Frank. <laughs> Rami for the Oscar all the way. That's yes. Enough said. Okay, me too. <laughs> I, for all of its his, alleged historical inaccuracies, who cares? It's a great movie. Yeah. And just allow yourself to get caught up in it because it's one hell of a ride. It is. It's a great so, ride. Yep. The next movie we have is uh, a film of a very different sort. <laughs> it may come across as a stuffy historical piece, a costume period drama when in fact it's not quite what it seems to be on the surface. This next one is called The Favorite. Dearest Queen, you are mad. Giving me a palace. It is a monstrous extravagance, Mrs. Molly. We are at war. We won! 
Oh, it is not over. We must continue. Oh. Oh, I did not know that. The Queen is an extraordinary person. They were all staring, weren't they? I can tell even if I can't see, and I heard the word fat. Fat and, and ugly. No one but me would dare, and I did not. She's been stalked by tragedy. Everyone leaves me. He dies. I apologize for my appearance. I hoped I might be employed here by you as something. A monster for the children to play with, perhaps. It is important to make new friends in court, is it not? You're so beautiful. Stop it, I, you mock me. If I were a man, I would ravish you. <laughs> you have become close to Abigail. She is a viper. You're jealous. You must send Abigail away. I do not want to. Let's shoot something. <gasps> Sometimes it is hard to remember whether you have loaded the pellet or not. I must take control of my circumstance. Throw! I'm on my side. Always. Favour is a breeze that shifts direction all the time. Then, in an instant, you're back sleeping with a bunch of scabrous whores. As it turns out, I am capable of much unpleasantness. <laughs> Did you just look at me? Look at me! How dare you! Close your eyes! I could not just stand by and let you destroy me. <laughs> you are enjoying all of this, aren't you? <laughs> oh, it is fun to be queen sometimes. If you do not go, I will start kicking you. And I will not stop. My dear friend, how good to see you've returned from hell. I'm sure you shall pass through it one day. Now, if you're left saying to yourself, what the heck was that? <laughs> you're not alone. No. You can take this one. Well, it's. it, it seems like, you know, it's... I don't know. It's written uh, like a comedy, kind of. Um, and it's actually the favorite is who's going to become the favorite of the queen? Is it going to be? And there's a, the terrific acting in this movie um, with Emma Stone and Rachel Wise and, and the queen. The queen is absolutely amazing in this movie. I must say, I'll have to give it to her. Olivia Coleman, who I, I'm not really familiar with. She's a British actress. But boy, She's, she's terrific in this movie, and she has a very tough role because she's very ill in this movie throughout it, and she needs the help of these two women that are vying for her attention. And also there's a war going on in the backdrop, but it seems to be almost secondary to the um, escapades that happen in the castle. Um, and there's, it, it, has, it has duck races, it has a little bit of everything that was really going on back in the 1700s in England in, in these, uh, you know, royalty. Um, and it shows the, you know, the juxtaposition of that because Emma Stone is a servant who becomes the queen's favorite or tries to become the queen's favorite and Rachel Wise is her actually second in command who's doing everything while the queen is sick. So it's about their whole um, battle between the three of them. It's a triangle and it works extremely well. It's very well done. Um, and it's very entertaining. So um, it's unusual. It's not like the other movies you've seen, but uh, I think it's enjoyable. And it, I can see why it's nominated for Best Picture. So that brings us to the next movie, another one which is very different, which is Green Book with uh, uh, Mar Mar Mahershala Ali and Viggo Mortensen. <laughs> Yeah, some guy called over here, a doctor. He's looking for a driver. You interested? I am not a medical doctor. I'm a musician. I'm about to embark on a concert tour in the Deep South. What other experience do you have? Public relations. Do you foresee any issues in working for a black man? You and the Deep South? There's gonna be problems. Promise me you're gonna write me a letter. I promise. Tell me that don't smell good. I've never had fried chicken in my life. You people love the fried chicken. You have a very narrow assessment of me, Tony. Yeah, right? I'm good. I'm the way I know. Who would be interacting with some of the wealthiest people in the country? It is my feeling that your addiction Oof. could use some finessing. Fun on, but why are you breaking my balls? Because you can do better, Mr. Balalonga. Dear Dolores. I saw Dr. Shirley play the piano. He's like a genius, I think. Come on, take it easy. I prefer not to get grease on my blanket. Ooh, I'm gonna get grease on my blanket. 
This gentleman says that I'm not permitted to dine here. I'm afraid not. How does he smile and shake their hands like that? Because it takes courage to change people's hearts. What are you doing? A letter. May I? Dear Dolores, sometimes you remind me of a house. You know this is pathetic, right? Put this down. The distance between us is breaking my spirit. Falling in love with you was the easiest thing I have ever done. P.S. Kiss the kids. That's like clinging a cowbell at the end of Shostakovich's is the seven. That's good. It's perfect, Tony. Come on, get out now. You never win with violence. You only win when you maintain your dignity. You don't know your own people. You, Mr. Big Shot, doing concerts for rich people. So if I'm not black enough, and if I'm not white enough, then tell me, Tony, what am I? Don't you call me? Anyone can sound like Beethoven. For your music, what you do, only you can do that. What do we do about the bones? We do this. <laughs> <laughs> Pick it up, Tony. Squirrels would eat it anyway. Pick it up. There are a lot of people who find this movie amazing, and it is well done. I have to go against the grain and say that it took me a while to get into it. Um, I thought it was, I thought it began a little slowly. I wasn't really feeling mm -hmm. much connection to the characters. I didn't really have a clear idea as to where the story was going, but it reached a point about halfway through where it really just suddenly kicked in and uh, the momentum was really, was really there for a good strong finish. So I personally would, would recommend seeing Green Book. I didn't love it, but I liked it. It's a, it's a, it's a good movie, hmm. made very competently. I liked it. I thought it was really good. I, I liked the beginning too. I just thought that it was so he was, they were so different, and it was like, um, I couldn't figure out Don Shirley at all at the beginning. Maybe that was part of what, what it was. I, I, couldn't, I couldn't figure, figure out either out. one of them. <laughs> well, him, him was, he was easier because, you know, he was a tough guy from Brooklyn who was working in, in, as, as a bouncer, pretty much. So I could, mm. I could see that, um, but he, it took a while for me to warm up to Don Shirley's character, but you know, once you warm up to him, you realize that that's who he was throughout the whole movie, even before, you know, at the beginning. And then he himself has his own demons that he is fighting with, uh, personal demons besides, you know, the issue of being black and, and, and going in the South in 19, early 1960s. But um, I liked the movie. I thought it was very well done. Like most Best Picture nominees in any given year, including this year, it's garnered its fair share of controversies. Yes. Um, the real-life family of Don Shirley, for example, they say that it's not an accurate depiction at all. And um, Mahershala Ali actually went so far as to issue a formal apology to the family, really? saying that for him, it was, for him it was an acting job and it was a, he felt a good story, a good role to play. That's yeah. what it was for him. And there wasn't, to be fair to Mahershala Ali, it's not as if there were a lot of research available to him because the real life Don Shirley was a very private, man. private person, very guided person. So mm -hmm. when you have limited access to a real life person you're playing, there's, there are gonna inevitably be those creative liberties that you have to take if you wanna develop a right. well-rounded character. Viggo Mortensen, he was able to, I mean, the character he played, the real life son, wrote the screenplay. So of course Viggo Mortensen had yes. lots of material to work with, lots of resources. Yes. So there certainly was a disparity between the two actors as far as the lump of clay they had to work with to shape and mold a character that they could bring alive onto the screen. Yeah, but, another reason too is that Peter Farrelly was nominated for Best Director for this. And mm -hmm. he is well known for comedies before this. I Not mean, just some comedies, of the but gross-out comedies, comedies of all time. raunchy comedies, exactly. Yeah, like, you know, there's something about Mary, Dumb and Dumber, and here he goes mm -hmm. and does a fantastic, you know, I thought he did a great, a great job with this drama. It's not an easy thing to portray, I think, but um, I don't think he stayed away from things like, that could be controversial. But he was telling the story the way he saw it. Mm. So, 
make have, you have your own opinion, folks. <laughs> <laughs> I'm saying jury's out. So, yeah. um, the next movie we have is a film that, too, <laughs> for its own reasons, uh, has been oh, yes. with lim some limited controversy. Not so much because of the story, but more so the production and marketing and release of the film. But we'll get to that after the trailer. Let's take a look at the trailer for Roma. This is very, on a visual level, an extremely striking movie. Yes. The black and white photography, the deliberate slow pacing of the pans from left to right. It's a very visually striking movie. Um, there are no, really no close-ups at all, um, which might be a turn-off of people who are not used to that kind of filmmaking. But the director is Alfonso Cuaron, who won the Academy Award, several actually, writing, directing, mm -hmm. for Gravity back in 2013. So it's a very different kind of film, this follow-up project. This mm -hmm. is much more personal for him. He based this fictional character on the housekeeper slash nanny that he himself grew up with in Mexico in his own childhood. And... This is really the story of this woman who goes through a series of life-altering events that you know, we probably shouldn't get into, but for spoiler purposes. But um, the reason why this film has been controversial has really nothing to do with the story itself. It's the fact that it's a Netflix movie. Yeah. Um, in order to be eligible for a Best Picture nomination, a movie has to have played for a minimum of one week in a theater somewhere in the United States, which is why a lot of times you will see Oscar hopefuls released in select cities and then opening nationwide after the holidays. That way they'll qualify for okay. Academy Award consideration. Did not realize and, that myself. And, well, that's what they did with Roma, yeah. so they fulfilled yeah. the requirement. Okay. But the thing of it is, is that they played an exclusive theatrical run uh, around Thanksgiving and then several weeks later it began streaming on Netflix because it is a Netflix movie so it never really got the initial nationwide release. So which it, never, is what, it, ha it hasn't still been released in, in theaters? More and more theaters have been screening it since the Oscar nominations came yeah. out but as far as a traditional mm. theatrical run it didn't really have one. And so that caused a lot of friction oh, wow, within the okay. filmmaking community as far as can we really consider this best picture, qualified for best picture. 
Um, in <laughs> fact, the AMC movie theater chain every year, they have a Best Picture Marathon. They'll take a weekend or maybe two consecutive weekends and they'll have back-to-back -back screenings of all of the Best Picture nominees of that year. Yeah. And the AMC theater said, we are not this year going to include Roma in the lineup because contractually AMC was never given the license to screen Roma. So they lost out on financially so, on what profits could have been made yep. from screening the movie. So, so let me ask you this, because I saw the movie also on Netflix. Um, and the, the, the benefit of seeing it on Netflix, well, I mean, you're paying for a membership on Netflix. Mm -hmm. But they're also missing out on, I would think they're missing out on a tremendous other, other revenue that they could be getting if they did have wider distribution. Yeah. That must be an issue between Netflix and the movie theater. The movie theater chains. Chains, yeah. right? No, as far as the financial logistics, that I really don't know anything but, about. But it's, it's Netflix's movie, yeah. and they made the decision they did to uh, make it public the way they did. But the thing of it is, is that despite this controversy, the movie has been cleaning up at all of the precursor it awards. Uh, it got the Golden Globe for Best Foreign Language Film. Yep. It got the... Um, British Awards. The British, the BAFTA, the British Academy of Film and Television Award. For both. For, for both. Um, foreign and domestic. Foreign and domestic film. So yes. it's, it's very, it's, it right now really is, Maybe the front runner. according to a lot of people, the front runner for the Academy Award for Best Picture. Now, if it wins Best Picture and Best Foreign Language Film, that'll be the first time in Oscar history that any film will, will pull off that twofer. <laughs> um, yeah. It also is, I mean, even if it doesn't, it is in the record books now, it's tied with another non-English speaking film, for the most Academy Award nominations Ten. for a non-English speaking film. Oh, really? Ten. For non-English speaking uh, For non-English okay. speaking film, I didn't that. Uh, Roma and Crouching Tiger, Hidden Dragon, which came out back oh, in 2000. Okay. Those two non-English speaking movies are tied at 10 nominations apiece. Well, you know something about that movie, film. about that movie too? I wish I had seen it on the big screen. Well, that's just it. Because the cinematography it, is so that's what it's made all for. encompassing. The, the landscapes of that's right. of Mexico, it's the unbelievable. city scenes, as well yeah. as the country scenes. as well as the rural areas, yes. the country, the country scenes. So His you do miss a lot. Gorgeous. It, it just is gorgeous on there. So watching it lying in bed on an iPad with a pair of earbuds <laughs> in versus seeing it on the big screen where it well, had truly envelops you, projected larger yes. than life onto a screen in front of you. Yes. There's something to be said about movies that are best suited for the big screen and movies where you can wait for the DVD. Roma is not one of them. If you have the chance to no. see Roma on the big screen, take it. I have not seen it on the big screen and I wish I had. I hadn't either, but I mean, I hope that it's going to be coming out on the big screen. So let's say it wins the awards. Is I would imagine that there'll be some they'll screen make of some, it in the yeah, future. They, then they'll make, <laughs> a, they'll make a deal. The line. They'll make a deal with they some will make of these a deal big with chains. Someone. Yeah, I, I, I mean, it's a good, it's a, it's, it's, a, it's a movie that's basically what I was read, read an interview with him is that uh, he wanted to recreate um, his life back in the 70s. And right. he went and he, he, and he found all these locations and things that he did not know about because he was a kid. And so he went and saw about what the, you know, the, the, uh, the battle between the students and the government. Mm, all the political all turmoil the political of the turmoil time. turmoil that was going on. And um, I'm not sure about the situation. I guess, I guess, well, you have to see it. I don't want to give away any spoilers. <laughs> and basically, it's, it's the story of a fictional character set right. against the backdrop of this real political turmoil that in Mexico. was going on in Mexico, Mexico in City. the early 1970s in Mexico City. Yeah, and really, and that's where it's he grew the up. character study of this woman. So yeah, and she's very good, even though she was away. never an actress. Isn't that something? This is her film debut, and she is she now nominated for Best Leading Actress. Yes, I don't know about that. I mean. I guess her emotions and everything comes through, and he picked her out of, I mean, he selected her out of a, thousands, I think, mm. scoured all over Mexico for it, and found mm. this woman that he thought would be fantastic. I guess she is fantastic in that movie. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Led by him, you know, I mean, he's a genius. And Roma, by the way, stands for, it, it, for the uh, part of Mexico City that he grew up in, something mm. Roma. So. I was all, people always ask, why is it called Roma? Mm. That's it, because that's where he grew up.
Which brings us to the next movie, I suppose, right? A Star is Born. Star is this Born. is 2018's A Star is Born, where we have Bradley Cooper and Lady Gaga, both nominated for Oscars. I'm pretty much going, Bradley Cooper and Rami Malek yeah. going toe-to-toe -to -toe over which, which singer is going to walk away with the Oscar. Let's take a look. Maybe it's time to let the old ways down. Maybe it's time to let the old ways down. Takes a lot to change, man. Hell, it takes a lot to try. You know, man, in the old days, I always knew, like, you were going to do something, that you'd be all right. It's the first time I'm worried about you. Can I ask you a personal question? Okay. Tell me something, girl. Do you write songs or anything? I don't sing my own songs. Why? I just don't feel comfortable. Why wouldn't you feel comfortable? Almost every single person has told me they liked the way I sounded, but that they didn't like the way I look. I think you're beautiful. Hey. What? I just want to take another look at you. In all the good times, I find myself longing for change. Here's what we're going to do. We come sing that song, what I love. No, I can't do that. Here, come on, here we go. Oh, it's not funny. <laughs> look at me. All you got to do is trust me. That's all you got to do. Let's begin with Sam Elliott. <laughs> he is nominated for Best Supporting Actor. Yes, yes. After a showbiz career spanning more than 50 years, That's he right. finally is enjoying his first Academy Award nomination. Terrible. Celebrating with him, I'm sure, is his wife, actress Catherine Ross, an Academy Award nominee herself for the classic 1967 film The Graduate. She was Elaine Robinson. So Wait, the two was of she them, in that movie? she was Elaine Robinson. She was not in this movie, no. Oh, okay. But what I'm saying is, is that now the two of them can yeah. both say, each is a each is an Academy Award nominee, and yes. they've been happily married since the early 1980s. And although he's not the front runner to win Best Supporting Actor, you never know. No. I mean, after all, Mark Rylance found his name being read out back in 2015 for Bridge of Spies when yeah. nobody was expecting that. So. There are no guarantees until the envelope is actually opened. So much you, for Sam Elliott. I, I thought he was good. I, I wish I had. I wish he had had more scenes in there with Brad mm -hmm. Cooper. As His screen was, time was limited. It was limited, but I thought he was. I mean, he was great when he's on there. But still. <laughs> so so it was, congratulations to Sam Elliott yes. for at least being nominated and getting this this career renaissance. Right. Now, this is Lady Gaga's second Oscar nomination. This is her first acting nomination. She was nominated for Best Song a couple of years ago um, for a documentary, but oh. she did not win. Okay, I didn't know that. As far as Bradley Cooper is concerned, well... <laughs> when hasn't he been nominated? Well, that's just it. This is yeah. his... What's this, his fourth? Fourth, I think. I think this is his fourth acting nomination. He was nominated for American Sniper. American Hustle and Silver Linings Playbook. This is his fourth acting nomination. He's also nominated as one of the producers of A Star is Born for Best Picture. Yep. And he's also nominated for screenplay for A Star is Born. That's right. But he did not get nominated for Best Director, which, is which was considered by his fans and some people, I suppose, a snub. Um, he did speak with Oprah about a week or two ago, yes, admitting that too. he was feeling yeah. uh, 
I think he, he, what was the word he used? I think he said embarrassed. Embarrassed. Embarrassed that he was not nominated for Best Director because he felt that that meant that he did not do his job well. But which, I, I, which is ridiculous because, I mean, he was, Lady Gaga was nominated. They're and all, he was, I mean, they're, he's, all nominated. they're all nominated. <laughs> and it's Best Picture, best so picture I, I think he did get snubbed. So the Don't, fact, when you have... I mean, you, if you have a Best Director and you have all these characters, the like main characters, they do a great job, and then the, the movie itself gets nominated for Best Picture, don't you think it's a snub? It, it is. It can be. I mean, take a look at Argo. Argo, back in 2012, it won for Best Picture, and, yeah. you know, it got other nominations as well. I think it won Screenplay, if I'm not mistaken, but Ben Affleck famously did not yes, get a Best Director get, nomination. That's true. So he yeah. did win as one of the producers for Best Picture. But so That's true. There have been times when the director is not nominated at all, and the picture wins. Driving Miss Daisy is another example of that. Okay. But um, I don't know. I mean, I can understand from Bradley Cooper's perspective the, the public insecurities that would go along with that kind of a snub, but it's not as if he completely got the shaft either. So, and, no. and who no. knew that he could sing this way? I know. I mean, everyone knows Lady Gaga, of course, can sing, right. but uh, he's gonna be Cooper, singing on the, He's going to be singing on the show. The two of them will be performing their Oscar-nominated song, Shallow. Yeah. And folks, if there is an Oscar pool that you are taking part in, you can quote us on this. That's right. Shallow is going to win <laughs> Best Song. Yes. If it doesn't, then... <laughs> Something's wrong. <laughs> Something is wrong here because yeah. that's going to happen. Yes. So, Lady that's Gaga true. will walk away with an Oscar for Best Song at the absolute least. I, I'm sure so. she will. I agree with you on that. Yeah, it was a good movie. Um, I, yeah, I, we, it, it's a, f it's, it's actually a feel, not a feel good movie, really. It, oh, it, no, it, no, no, <laughs> no, 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 no. No, it I mean, shows for, the it shows well, the undesirable she, aspects of show business. It's the right. fourth film version of the same. Right. general story yeah no but i mean she's going skyrocketing high and he's like plummeting because of the drugs mm -hmm. and everything he gives her her big break he's right. the movie begins he's on a hot streak she's struggling right. to get noticed and he gives her her big break and then they flip-flop that's right uh, the first version was in 1937 with frederick march and janet Gaynor. that won the academy award for a category that no longer exists called Best Original Story. Wow. And then the most popular film version, or at least the most yes. sentimentally, the sentimental favorite is probably the Judy Garland version from the early 1950s. She and James Mason both got Oscar nominations for that version. So? The one I thought you were going to you were going to say was the Barbra Streisand. Uh, Chris oh, Chris the third Robinson. film version? Well, people love that one too. <laughs> I saw that one. I didn't so. see the other one. I oh, you didn't, didn't see no, the... No, I didn't know. There's, this is fourth? This is the fourth. Wow. This is the fourth. Okay. I mean, it does reach the point where anything else, it's how many times can you keep telling the same story, but there are enough variations each time yeah. that make it, that make, that make this latest incarnation with Bradley Cooper and Lady Gaga a well-made film. It is, it is. It, it is a well-made film, and had he been nominated for Best Director, I do think it would have been deserved. But there are only five slots, so... Who gets in and who gets out, that's up to the director's branch of the Academy, I suppose. Yeah. Okay. That brings us to our final, our eighth nominated movie, Vice. What do you say? I want you to be my VP. I want you. You're my vice. Well, George, I, uh, I'm the CEO of a large company. I have been Secretary of Defense, and I have been White House Chief of Staff. The Vice Presidency is a mostly symbolic job. Uh -huh. However, if we came to a uh, different understanding, I can handle the more mundane jobs, overseeing bureaucracy, military, energy, and uh, foreign policy. Yeah, right. I like that. I got a plan. I know the direction. The lay of the land. When you have power, people will always try to take it from you, always. No, no, nothing can break, no, nothing can break me down. I'm the man. Are you even more ruthless than you used to be? Right 
So we're gonna do this thing or what? I mean, is this happening? I believe we can make this work. <laughs> Hot damn. There is a very stylized snackiness to this film, which is not a bad thing. It's Adam McKay who wrote and directed The Big Shot. It's very much in that same style with the jumpy editing. Um, Amy Adams is celebrating her sixth Academy Award nomination. I don't think she'll win. I think the competition is too fierce, but hopefully someday she'll be able to take home the statuette. She Sam Rock. She hasn't won yet. She has not won yet, not an Academy Award. Sam Rockwell, who just won last year for three billboards outside Ebbing, Missouri. He's yeah. nominated for playing George W. Bush. And Christian Bale, take it away. <laughs> Christian Bale is unbelievable in this movie. If not, if, it's the best reason to see this movie, Vice, because he disappears, and, he be, and you, you, you're convinced that that's... Uh, uh, what's his first name? Cheney? Dick Cheney. Uh, Dick Cheney. Dick Cheney. Uh, in, in that, you know... In that movie, I mean, you're convinced that's him. You were never in a million years that that's Christian Bale. And the movie is very good. It uh, shows the rise of Dick Cheney, and it shows how huh, absolute power corrupts. What they say, what's the expression? Corrupt. Uh, when you have power, people listen. What Amy Adams says in the trailer just yeah. now. Yeah, no. when, when you have power, people will listen to you. People listen, yeah. So it's... it's um, People will watch that movie, and depending, I guess, on which side of the political fence you're on, you're either going to be very angry, or you're going to think that somebody, you know, kind of like uh, slanted the movie in the, in the direction they wanted to have it slanted in. But boy, it's definitely worth seeing to make that opinion. I think yeah. it's, it should have been there for now. Make an informed opinion. Yeah. yeah, you can make an informed opinion when you watch that. So those are all the eight movies, folks. and. Uh, We'll find out on Sunday night, February 24th, which of those movies is going to take home the gold. Yeah, so what's your pick before we uh, thank everybody? Thank, uh... Oh, that's such a tough call. It wouldn't shock me if Roma gets it, but it also wouldn't shock me if Green Book gets it. It wouldn't shock me if Black Panther sneaks in benefiting from a tie vote, or a split vote. I think it's probably going to be Roma, but uh, my favorite was still Bohemian Rhapsody, even if it doesn't win. <laughs> They so the, at, at, at any rate, we want to thank uh, Roxanne Morse, our great director, and Dave Young, Jeff Pickett for all their assistance in putting this project together. So until next time, we'll see you at the movies. Thank you very much. All right.